uh, not to lose some information, we'd like to uh, suggest to the short lecture related to the cystic neoplasia, neoplasias, because uh, those modern ideas on classifications and guidelines uh, concerning some treatment procedures of cystic uh, pancreatic neoplasias, they have some nuances, and from my point of view, they uh, they are underestimated by the uh, Russian medical community. That's why we consider that we should remind once again about those uh, guidelines uh, existing uh, in accordance with international guidelines. I'd like to give a floor to Evgenia uh, Vasyukova, the surgeon of uh, the uh, from the hospital 122. Esteemed colleagues. Uh, my talk is related to international uh, standards on treating patients with cystic, uh, mm, uh, with cystic uh, pancreatic uh, neoplasias. And uh, we will talk most about uh, IP men's uh, and MCNs. And uh, talking about the frequency of the disorders, about the incidence, it's hard to give the number. Uh, here you see diagram which uh, where blue color shows number of patients being admitted to one of the uh, uncle, uh, cancer centers in France or concentrating patients with uh, uh, pancreatic neoplasias. In, 19, in 1995 they had about 20 or so patients. In 2009 they had more than t or about of 200 of them so it sharply went up. The red line shows the size of the pancreatic neopla uh, neoplasia uh, tumors or masses. At the end of the 20th century, the size was three to four centimeters. Uh, then at the moment, the average size of the primary or uh, newly diagnosed uh, mass, and these are primary newly diagnosed patients coming to the hospital, it is only 1.6 centimeter. So it is much less in size. Of course, improvement of instrumental diagnostic uh, techniques uh, increases number of uh, identified neoplastic cysts. I'm sorry, sorry for that. Uh, diagnostic methods being used to diagnose those uh, cystic neoplasias. First place is a CD scanning. And here you see the data of the Paris Cancer Center. Almost 100% of patients, uh, they underwent CD scanning during the last 15 years. MRI. Recent years we see it's used more often, but PAT is not that widely used. It's a green line here, it's a green curve just 11% of patients undevented recently. Um, on the other hand, recently, they used a lot a use endoscopic ultrasonography, and it's almost always it is combined with FNA. This classification is, so to say, rather arbitrary. So pancreatic cysts could be divided into the benign. It could be post-pancreatic post cysts, uh, serous, uh, serous cyst neoplasias and uh, congenital cysts, then potentially malignant cysts. Uh, mostly we'll talk about the IP mens and MCNs. And uh, the endocrine tumors is uh, uh, adenocarcinoma, so it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a malignant uh, tumors. If we take all patients 100%, in mostly, uh, most often we see IPMNs and MCNs, it's about 50% of all patients. All neoplastic cysts could be uh, considered as non-mucine producing and mucine producing, and the latter, uh, the latter are uh, uh, often become uh, uh, cancers. Zero cysts, zero cyst masses, they're almost benign, but with a size four to five centimeters, uh, they're indicators for surgery. IPM, uh, IPMNs, they see not that often, one to three percent uh, of all tumors, 
It could be seen in men and women, any age. They develop mostly in the head, uh, in the pancreatic head, 70% of those masses. It could be seen in the both the main duct and in its branches. And about a quarter of patients, we can see a multicentric uh, tumor development. Malignization risk of IPMNC is rather high. In case of main duct IPMNC, it's about 50%. The international guidelines uh, talk about three types of IPMNs. It's uh, main duct IPMNs, uh, branch IPMNs, and mixed type. The main duct IPMNs, uh, uh, they have the following signs. Uh, the pancreatic duct dilation above one centimeter. So branch IPMNs do not have dilation of uh, uh, pancreatic duct, or it's uh, dilated to five to nine millimeters. But in case of, of uh, branch IPMNs, uh, we could find microscopic involvement of main duct with worse prognosis for the patient. And another group of the diseases, it's a so-called mucinous cystic neoplasias. They're seen only in women because of the etiologist disease. It's uh, incorporating of ectopic ovarian stoma into the, pancreatic, uh, into the pancreas. Uh, they're mostly located in body and tail, and uh, they have very high malignization rate. Once again, uh, this type of uh, neoplasia has an uh, ovarial stroma type, and it's uh, a key uh, difference of, uh, uh, mm, of those mucinous uh, cystic uh, masses. Talking about the pre-cancer pancreatic uh, disorders or pancreas, pancreatic pre-cancers, then, um, uh, then we could see that uh, mucinous cystic neoplasias are related to pre-cancers. What, uh, what should we do? Uh, how to manage these patients? Not to pay attention, not, of course, to watch those patients or to follow them up or to do the surgery. Well, the uh, issue with management is that Pre-op diagnosis is quite complicated. It's not that easy. It's not that easy to do. You could see that diagnostic accuracy of IP, of main duct IPMNs is about 60 percent, and for mucinous cystic neoplasias it's even less. And in one sort of cases, pre-op diagnosis is uh, wrong. Factors we pay attention to is the size of the uh, uh, mass uh, M MRI. Uh, uh, and uh, CT scan data, clinical science, and data of uh, EUs plus FNA. Uh, international guidelines in, uh, recommend the following. If there is a cyst with a size about one centimeter, then they do spiral CT scan or MRI with MRI CG uh, to uh, determine the time to see what the disease we have. If we see uh, if we see cysts with uh, high risk stigmas, obturation or jaundice, uh, dilated uh, pancreatic duct about one centimeter, and uh, mm, solid components, then it requires surgery for sure. If we see cysts with so called alarming signs, we should do a use for further certification of the risk. If it is a cyst about one centimeter and there are no those signs, uh, or, I mean, in, uh, if, there is a thick, if there is no signs of wall thickening or no solid component, there's a moderate dilation of pancreatic duct, five to nine millimeters, then such cysts, they also should undergo endoscopic ultrasonography for to further assess risk, uh, meaning the wall thickening and, uh, and to see if there are any nodules. If the cyst is less than three centimeters in size and there are no alarming signs, then those patients are recommended for uh, follow-up. We should say that pre-op differential diagnosis of uh, minimal invasive carcinoma, uh, so it's hard to differentiate minimal invasive carcinoma from IPM and MECN uh, pre-op, uh, which determines our further patient management. MCNs, should we do the surgery to all of them? Well, the answer is that since these are precancers, then for sh the, there are indications for surgery because if 
mucinous systemic carcinoma develops and could be seen in 50% of cases. Such disorders are uh, very hard to resect and they have very poor prognosis for patients. How to manage such patients? If it is, uh, it is a disease of the main duct, that's an indication for surgery. Malignization rate is about uh, 60 percent. Five-year survival rate is not more than 50 percent. If it is a branch neoplasia, branch PMN, then there are so-called crit Sendai criteria. They were determined, were defined by the inter international consensus in the previous guidance of 2006. If there are size of cystic neoplasia size above three centimeters, if there are symptoms of there are any nodules in the wall, in the cyst wall, that's an indication for a surgery for sure. Once again, about the uh, indications to surgery, uh, patients for uh, so all patients with main duct impairments, all patients with branch duct. Uh, uh, with MCNs and uh, BDI payments, uh, if there are any risk signs, if there is, uh, with other patients, uh, other patients they could be just followed up. And uh, say how much of surgery we should do. Once again, pre uh, it's hard to differentiate minimal invasive carcinoma from my payments and MCN pre-op. And that's why we should look at the localization, the location. We should uh, we should do pancreatic duodenal resection, or the distal resection, or even pancreatectomy with lymph dissection. It's a standard of treatment for invasive and non-invasive uh, MPMN and MCN. In cases, if uh, histology confirms. If, if we if we confirm that the has a uh, if we see a low high differentiated uh, uh, levels, then the, the, the we can do laparoscopy. Ablation is not recommended according to the uh, latest guidelines. Limited resection, it's possible for such interventions. Uh, like major resection, pancreatic resection, but we should take into account that in case of uh, branch epimen, carcinoma and ceta might be present. Though such limited resection could be considered as a possible option, but the, we still don't have any uh, results of uh, long-term follow-up. And thank you for your attention.